Hey everyone, it's Witch Wars time. Okay, so we're on to chapter nine, which is called Clutterbox. So let's find out what Clutterbox is. Maybe we should go back to Linden House, said Peggy. It's getting late. Never, cried Fluffinora, skipping down the street in her jeans. Tiga laughed and raced after her. Come on, Peggy, she called back. As Peggy came lolloping along behind, Tiga realised something. Ritzy City was the best place on earth, if it was somewhere on earth, and she wanted to stay. All the witch wars stuff, the fighting, the cackling, the felicity bats, had made Tiga worry that Ritzy City was not the place for her. But she loved this. Fluff and Nora weaved in and out of the crowds of witches, who were all very amused by her jeans, and Tiga skipped along next to her in her dress and massive hat, and for the first time felt like a proper ritzy city witch. They took a sharp left down an alleyway that at first seemed like a dead end, but hidden in the shadows was a tiny door and an even tinier window. Fluff and Nora knocked seven times, then drummed her fingers once, and then knocked one final time. A plump, rosy-cheeked witch in a huge, wide-brimmed hat flung the door open. Fluff and Nora, you're here! Something has happened to your legs, she cried. Jeans, Mrs Clutterbuck. It's the fashion above the pipes. Mrs Clutterbuck raised an eyebrow. Beans? Jeans, said Fluff and Nora. Anyway, we're all doing that stupid witch wars thing tomorrow and could really do with a clutterbox. These are my friends, Peggy and Tiga. Witch wars, you say? Well, come in, come in, dears. Behind the little door, Tiga expected to see a tiny cave of a place, maybe some wooden tables and chairs, but instead, a huge white light spelling out clutterbox swung from the ceiling, and all up the wonky old walls were ornate tables and chairs that looked as if they were floating. Witches cackled and laughed and drank out of elaborate glasses and steam billowed and puffed from little machines dotted about the place. Clutterbucks is a secret cafe. Only important fashion people are allowed inside. They make the best bubbly drinks in town and some very excellent cakes, Fluffinora explained. These two have never been here before, she said to the witch who was showing them to their seats. Tiga looked back at Peggy and laughed. Her eyes were huge, her mouth was open, her hands were smacked against her cheeks. Over in the corner, Tiga saw a group of witches having fun, waving their hands and changing the colour of another witch's skirt from black to white to grey. Oh, grey is nice, they said, to spotty, to stripy, to invisible. The witch covered her frilly pants with her hands. Stop that, she yelled. The witch waitress led them up some winding stairs and pointed at one of the tables floating nearby. We float them so we have more space, she said, handing them each a menu. Tiga pulled a chair over and sat down shakily. It wobbled and tipped from left to right. She grabbed her hat with one hand and steadied the chair with the other. Peggy leapt onto her chair with such force that it spun madly in a circle, sending her hat flying across the room and straight into someone's cake. So sorry, Peggy mouthed across the room. Fluff and Nora just sat down. Clutterbucks, makers of the best bubbly drinks since winks were invented. Ritzy Original, five singles. The Witching Whirl, eight singles. Flat Hat, fi flat hat Fizz, six singles. The We Hate Celia Crayfish Cocktail, six singles. Witch Walls Mix, five singles. The Big Exit Bubble Mix, five singles. Brilliant Big Sue Supreme, eight singles. Boom! Nine thousand singles. Warning, this drink transports you back in time for 10 minutes to Ritzy City a hundred years ago. 200 years ago if you drink it through your nose. Mrs Clutterbuck appeared at their table carrying a tray of glasses filled with a shimmering black liquid, each with a huge striped straw. Here you go, dears. Enjoy your clutterbucks. I thought you'd like the Witch Wars one, she said with a wink. Your snack, she added, nodding at a massive three-tier cake that was wobbling through the air, is on its way. Peggy took a huge swig of her drink and made a massive slurping noise. I love this place, said Tiga. Yeah, it's a 
right, I suppose, said Fluff and Nora. You're so cool, gushed Peggy, and you have such a unique name. Tegan nodded, but Fluff and Nora shook her head and took a sip of her drink. It's not my real name. When I was four, I demanded they change it. I used to be called Anna, but Fluff and Nora seemed cooler at the time. Sometimes I wish they hadn't given me everything I wanted. Peggy cackled and nearly fell off her chair. Oh, frog pies, that's hilarious. You changed your name to Fluffinora. Fluffinora paused and looked sternly at Peggy for a worrying second, but then cackled too. It was the first time Tiga had ever seen her laugh. The witches at the table next to them burst into a chorus of cackles too. They were, much to Tiga's surprise, cackling at their spoons. What are they doing? she asked. Watching TV, said Peggy. On spoons, Tiga spluttered. Of course. Why, where do you watch TV, Tiga? Well, on a TV, Tiga said. Yes, but where do you make the TV appear? Tiga had no idea what Peggy was talking about. So you can't do the TV spell, Fluffinora asked as she waved at Mrs Clutterbuck and ordered another drink. Tiga didn't really want to admit that she didn't know any spells. She doesn't know any spells, said Peggy, patting Tiga on the back, but I'm going to teach her some. Which was is going to be tricky if you don't know any spells, said Fluffinora. She must have seen Tiga's face crumple because she quickly added, not that you really need spells for witch wars. You don't? Tiga asked. It sort of sounded to her like you really did. Why don't you teach her the TV spell, Peggy? said Fluffinora. Yes, Peggy cried, attempting to stand up, but then remembering she was on a floating chair. Where would you like to watch TV? Tiga glanced around Clutterbox. Only a couple of tables in front of them sat a witch scratching her bald head. On her head? Tiga joked. Oh, OK, Peggy said casually. Look at her head and repeat after me. TV. We can make a TV on the back of her head, Tiga asked. I was joking. Of course we can, said Peggy. Now repeat. TV. TV, said Tiga. TV, Peggy said again. TV, said Tiger. Tiga. TV, TV, TV. What? This is... Tiga started. Oh, just say it, said Fluffinora. TV, 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 Tiga mumbled. And then, just like that, a moving image appeared on the back of the bald woman's head. Oh, you don't want that channel, Peggy giggled. That's Fairy 5. It's all just stuff for fairies. The presenter fairy was pointing at a large window and shaking her finger as some fairies smacked into it. Watch out for windows, scrolled along the bottom of the screen. To change the channel, you click your fingers, said Peggy. But before Tiga could, the bald witch pulled a hat onto her head and the screen disappeared. That's why people tend to watch it on spoons, because it's easier, Peggy said. Witch Wars will be the biggest thing on TV. Psst, said one of the witches at a nearby table. She nudged her friend and pointed at Tiga. Witch Wars witches, Tiga smiled at them, which made them giggle. Oh, let's not do witch wars, Fluffinora cried. It's so stupid. But if you win, you get to live in Linden House, said Peggy. Linden House is about five times smaller than my house, said Fluffinora. And I mean the playhouse in my garden that I've had since I was two. It's huge to me, said Peggy, sipping her clutterbucks. And if you win, you get to make the rules and make things nice for people. Tiga watched as Peggy pulled a tattered little notebook out of her pocket. I've been thinking about the rules for as long as I can remember. Every time I think of a good one, I write it down. And if I ever meet someone who is sad, I write their name in here, just in case I ever do become top witch, and then I won't forget to help them. Tiga smiled as Peggy stuffed the notebook back in her pocket. Oh, that's so boring, though, said Fluffinora, throwing her hands in the air. Who cares about other people? Let's just hide out in Clutterbucks and let one of the other witches win. Tiga loved Clutterbucks, and the thought of making a fool of herself on the back of a spoon wasn't really her idea of fun. And now that she thought about it, she was never going to learn enough magic by the morning to actually win. Yeah, Tiga cried, let's hang out in Clutterbucks forever. She clinked her glass against Fluffinora's. Fluffinora winked. That's the spirit. Peggy scrunched up her face into a horrified little ball. But Tiga!
bigger? Don't you want to compete? Don't you owe it to the person who put you forward for witch wars? Tiga put her drink down on the table. Wait, someone put my name down for this? Peggy nodded. Of course, you've got to be nominated by another Sinkville witch. The names of the first nine nine-year-old witches nominated in Sinkville on the day of the top witches' reign ends are chosen to compete. Who nominated you? Flofanora asked Peggy. My gran, she thinks I'm brilliant at everything, but I think that's got a lot to do with the fact that she loves me and is almost completely blind. Who nominated you? Flofanora shook her head. My mum, she thinks it's a good way for me to make some friends. I had to remind her it's a competition based on an ancient war. They both looked at Tiga, who was staring blankly back at them. Who nominated you, Tiga? Peggy asked. Tiga shook her head. It's impossible. I don't know any witches. I'd never met a witch until I came here today. Someone knows you, said Fluffinora, finishing off her drink. Who? Tiga asked. But Peggy and Fluffinora had no idea. And that is the end of chapter nine, everybody. So tune in tomorrow for chapter 10, which is called Feathers. Bye.